Hey guys, today, today we're gonna be staking up some Italian cypress with some bamboo stakes that we got over here. And we're gonna use these rubber band ties with, a little, with the arrow on it to hook it around. Italian cypress make a nice like column-like plant that you could use you know, as a column. Or, or you could put it down the aisle, you know, on the side of your driveway. Italian cypress can get up to 115 feet tall, and they also get up 10 feet with width. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty nice, that's a pretty nice sized tree. And then remember, it doesn't get 10 feet wide, but it has that, it stays pretty, pretty bunched together for the most part when it does get larger growing up to those higher heights. in the rubber band around the central stem. You want to make sure you don't get any other too many stems or you know you just want that main central stem that's the strongest. Let me see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about. You see how you have one right here, one right here, one right here. You want to you want to get it around right here flush you want to get as flush as possible on the main on the main like the main um stem mostly because it's the strongest and you also don't want to have everything bunched up like this because you want to be able for the growth to you know grow naturally have that nice flow that you know the plants have uh, here we have another one stake you see how it's leaning to this side it's leaning to the right right <laughs> i didn't mean to say right right but it's leaning to the right so we're gonna put the stake right like almost a centimeter away from the base of the plant push it down get all the way to the bottom of that pot get your rubber tie let me take my drills off so i can do it a little faster get that rubber tie now with this one it has two has two strong central stems so i'm just going to take this one right here since it looks a little thicker than the one in my left hand. Pull those leaves back, get it flush against that bamboo. Then you get, then you get whatever tie you're using. For stuff like this, I know they usually use like rubber band type ties, but for like tomatoes, peppers, you can use like Velcro tape or you know, like the plastic ties that you have. Like, it's like a gun that like, you just like click and it just puts it on automatically. It was pretty nice too. But you know, nothing's wrong with it. using good old bamboo. And it's natural. Another another plus. And it's, it's pretty sturdy for the most part. And you don't have to worry about this falling apart when it's in the water, you know, it getting wet. Bamboo is gonna be pretty much the same state after it can, it can rain all night, that bamboo is, not, is gonna hold up perfectly fine. I actually use the bamboo to stake up my tomato plant at home. When I think about, I've used bamboo to stake up a lot of my um, recent plants. But I also use sunflower stalks as well. And I'm gonna be honest, the main reason I started using like bamboo and the sunflower stalks Garden steaks are kind of, they're not pricey, but it, the main reason I started using them is because garden steaks aren't pricey, but they do, they do cost, they do cost, especially for the longer ones or, you know, ones with a certain diameter, like thickness. And I was trying to get like, like some 12 feet, like some, not 12 feet, that's a little, that's a little crazy. But I was trying to find like some six foot ones, kind of growing mammoth sunflowers in the pot and I knew I was gonna have to support them just because I'm going into the pot versus you know in the ground but then I remember I had I had bought some garden steaks from Home Depot I remember I wasn't able to find any so then when one of, one of my son one of my members had grown on that support I pretty much chopped I chopped the stalk let it dry in the sun for like a week for like probably like two weeks or so and then there you have it 
you got you got a, you got a nice a nice garden steak. But the, the sunflower is is definitely weaker than the bamboo for sure. I'll say that. A sunflower could definitely break if you were to, you know, put enough pressure or to try to force it to snap. It definitely will snap on you for sure. But the bamboo, look, look, look at the bend. Pretty flexible too. Plus, plus, oh. Okay, bad example. <laughs> bad example, bad example, bad example. You see? Nice, nice, strong. I'm, I'm putting, I'm, look, at my, look at my hand. I'm putting some force into that and I cannot snap it. I just got a cramp trying to snap it, crazy enough. So my hands are stuck like this for a couple seconds. So let me go over here until my hands uh, uncramp. But that just goes to show, bamboo is tough. It's so hard to snap. Like you really have to put like some force into it to like snap a piece of bamboo. I was just, I was trying like full strength to snap it and I, my hands cramped up pretty bad. So that just, that just shows you the strength of bamboo. You know, who doesn't want to use nat natural, you know, natural supplies? I'm sure, I'm sure everyone would rather use uh, like bamboo over plastic. Well, not everyone, but you know. And it's also more affordable too. Because if you think about it, if you get your own bamboo plant and you let that, you let it take off in your backyard, you let it like grow over years and years, you'll have, a, you'll have an endless supply of um, bamboo steaks. When I first learned about using bamboo to stake stuff was when I was at my last nursery job. I remember I was I was trimming the bamboo plants. And, I was, and when I was trimming them, I remember feeling a piece, so I, I bent it. And I was like, hmm, pretty, pretty durable, pretty flexible for the most part. It could take some bend, but it doesn't snap easily. So once I found out, I was like, "Hmm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna take some of these cut up pieces home. These are the garden steak." And here we have it. <laughs> and now I'm using bamboo steaks at work. So I love these guys. Nice, strong, durable. Oh yeah, remember to remember to compact that soil too. Compact that soil. Get a nice, get a nice and firm around the base. And you want to do that with every anything you're anything you're putting in a pot. Honestly, you should compact compact it automatically because one thing about plants, if you don't compact it, you see how loose this is. See how loose? Look, watch. I'm gonna put a let me get let me get a thicker bamboo stick. I want to get thin. See how loose it is? Look, it's moving around, moving to the right. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it straight. Watch. One centimeter, right there. Push down, boom. Now look how easy. Look how easy that was. It was just flopping over to the left and the right. But all I had to do was really get it right, right into that root, right, right in that root ball a little bit. And we're, we're setting it up pretty nicely. See, boom, boom. Straight, young. You see that you see this part out because this is not the central. This, this is not the central stem. This is like other, you know, other branches like you know, with the leaves on it. But the main one right here, you don't, you don't see it flopping to the left, to the right. It's sturdy, it's strong. Compact that soil, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey guys, so this is a, good, a continuation of the time cypress staking video that I did just moments ago. Hold on, I need, I gotta get more bamboo sticks. Get more bamboo. Gotta get some bamboo. All right, now we've got our bamboo. Let's get to work. Now this one right here, I wanted to show you guys this one. This is because of how, you know, it's really off to the right. It's about it. It's, it's like he's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to climb out the pot almost. No, don't run from us, buddy. We, we want you to stay. Don't leave us. So remember what I said. It's like almost like a centimeter away from that central. I'm going straight up. Probably gonna tie it around this middle, this middle part right here. Get it flush against this area. You see how there's no leaves. 
Easy, that's an easy spot to get that that tie flush right against right against the bamboo. Easy spot. So get that bamboo. Stick it right there. Let's go a little over. Go right down. Hold on. Some of these root balls are tied in the one gallons. I'm not gonna lie. Hold on. Let me go to a different spot. Maybe go down. Ooh, that takes some force. That takes some force to get through to get through the roots. And remember, these these are in parts. So nine times out of ten, a lot of these guys are probably gonna be root bound. You keep your plants in pots for over six months. Nine times out of ten, when you when you do like this, you're gonna feel a lot of tightness at the bottom. Depending on your plant, of course. But I know like a panthus will so definitely get root bound. That gets root bound really bad. You do not want to leave that in a pot for an extended period of time. Now you see. We got a we got a flush right on that that right on that that area with no leaves pretty much and boom we're gonna, we're gonna pull that arrow through and boom we just staked up our Italian cypress see how perfectly straight that is that's 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 beautiful that's that's a beautiful that's a beautiful job right there beautiful you guys want to see a love bug ah i thought i caught them <laughs> usually when they fly around i'm able to catch them i usually like i don't kill them i just i, I grab them like this and i just I, I throw them back into the air i will say this i don't there's not a lot of mosquitoes at work but the love bugs are my version of the mosquitoes they don't bite or anything but they do fly in my face uh when it's pretty hot during the day and anyone who works at a nursery or a farmer or you know works in their garden could uh hear me out when i say this when you're doing something and you're trying to focus you know you're like cutting something pruning something or you know you're trying to weed i'm sure every gardener hates when something flies directly in their eye or directly in their face it just no one likes it it just sucks honestly imagine imagine you're trying to imagine this i'm, I'm trying to like stake this up then boom <sighs> A lot of bug just hits me in my eye. Now, now, I'm, now I'm over here trying to re kind of get my, get my balance back, <laughs> find where the love bug went so I could grab him. I mean, not really. I don't, try, I don't, I really, I don't like killing, I don't like killing bugs, especially not love bugs. I mean, look at their name, a love bug. <laughs> I don't want to kill a love bug. <laughs> That's like killing a ladybug. But yeah, I've, al I've always had like a pet peeve of like, like insects flying in my face. It doesn't matter what type of like bug it is. You know what, the only thing I will say, butterflies are the only ones that can fly in my face and I'm okay. They're beautiful, I love seeing their wings. They fly on my face or they fly on my head. That's cool. Anything else? No. I know a lot of, I know a lot of, I know a lot of y'all live in different states. I know some people live in Alabama, Georgia, Virginia, UK, you know, all around the world, all around the country, but here, here, here in Tallahassee, we got, and I've never seen this bug before because I'm, I'm originally from Miramar, Florida. So I'm new, I'm kind of new to North Florida and stuff. But there's a bug called a cicada, and man, when I tell you, mm, I don't, I don't like those. I do not like those guys. I don't know if they bite or they could do anything to you, but the sound that they make is enough to make me want to run out my own house, honestly. I know, I know I look like a pretty, pretty, you know, tall dude, big dude, you know, six, six, four, but, you know, certain bugs, once they're in the house, it's not my house anymore. I'm, I'm just being honest. They find that house, is theirs. Until I can find them, it's theirs. I'm, I'm not even gonna, I'm not, I, can't, I can't sleep until I can find them. I'll never forget my first time encountering cicada. I hope I'm saying it right. Cicada? Yeah, I think I'm saying it right. I remember walking outside, going on the porch. And I remember, I was gonna go water my plants, which I didn't get to do because of, you know, said situation. But I remember just hearing this sound and I was like, what sound is that? I never heard that sound before. It was like a, like a very fast vibrating sound. But I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't really describe what it, what it sounds like, honestly. But I remember just going to the porch screen and seeing this giant bug on the screen. And I just, man, I remember he, he, as soon as I heard that sound from the wings, he took off and I just ran in the house trying to get away. 
that was man that was not a good day boy that was ah, that was tough for sure I wish I wish I I wish I had a video I wish I could show you the guys the video honestly because I had to laugh I had to laugh at myself when I got in the house after seeing the way I ran on camera the way I ran on, <laughs> the way I ran on camera was hilarious to get in that house man you would have thought you would have thought a pit bull or like something crazy is outside trying to like like mess me up you'd have thought man I don't think I've ever ran up those, I don't think I've ever ran in the house that fast in all my life, honestly. But one thing I will say, after moving from South Florida to North Florida, I definitely do see a lot more, Um, I wanna say wild, I'll say wildlife. Uh, I wanna say nature as well, because South Florida is more, I wanna say it's more touched by humans or more people, you know. It's more man, man-made ponds, man-made lakes, you know, man-made fountains, like that sort of thing. A lot of the parks are man-made, but in Tallahassee or the Monticello area, you know, you know, the surrounding areas, for example, it's a lot of un it's a lot of untouched land. It's just pure, this this trees, this this woodsy, you know, this woods. It's just, it's just a it's just a nice feeling just to be able to see that, see you know, see something new. I'm so used to like the city life, sort of. So when I moved out here, it was, it was it was nice, especially me because I, you know, I love plants and everything. And I, I always love nature. As you can see, every day I take a I take a photo of the sky uh, for my Grand Rising post. I love taking photos of the sky you know, when clouds like look a certain way, or the darkness of the clouds, the moon, the sun. It's it's anything that it's just nature. I just I just love honestly. It's just it's living. It's living art all around us. It's honestly living art all around, around us every day. And I'm all here for it. I'm here for it. Like just today, um, I saw I saw the I saw my gator buddy in the back. And I I, I, knew, I'm, I know I'm calling him my gator buddy, but you know I, I know not to get close, of course, or you know try to try to grab or anything like that. But I always find it fascinating to see animals I see on Animal Planet on like TV shows in real life. I don't know why. Like armadillos, like I've seen so many like like armadillos, but I've never seen an armadillo alive. I've always seen them like on the side of the road. But armadillos are like I find armadillos to be like a really cool animal, like how they could like roll up and like protect themselves. I feel like they have like a really cool ability. And, I, and that's my biggest. That's one of my biggest things. I've always loved nature, and I've always loved animals and their abilities, what they could do, or what makes them unique compared to other animals, for example. Like octopus, they could camouflage very well underwater. They, they have some insane camouflage. And that's part of the reason why I'm scared of them. <laughs> to me, they look like aliens, sort of. They look, not not aliens, but they look just like something out of this world crazy, right? Hold on, hold on, guys. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna have to cut the video short. Thank you guys for watching.